happening in a match between Jimmy Connors and Ronald Agenor. Connors, two sets to love in hand and three all in the third. And there for the call, Ron Franklin and Mary Carrillo. Well, just as we come back, nothing really has changed. The crowd is still roaring every time Jimmy Connors does something. And he just finished off a volley. 30-15, uh, Agenor is, is serving. And the difference in this set with Connors two sets in hand is the fact that Agenor has not been broken in this third set. Well, yeah, that's a big difference because this poor guy has been busted all over the place. Jimmy Connors' return of serve is obviously a very good one. But on this surface, it could be, tr it could be worrisome. As you can see, he's always looking to get into the net and end these things. He's not a great returner of serve on a clay court because it bounces up so high and he can't pound the way he'd like. Aginor got it. Great cross-court save, and he's up 40-15. But again, Aginor just is not playing a smart match at all. I mean, he's not using any kind of tactics that could win him this match. He's, he has to come up with great shots like this, and I, I'm just not convinced he'd be able to string enough of them together to stop Connors. Agenor. So let's take a break. We're on surf 4 3. Agenor, third set. Connors with two Agenor sets in hand. May 30th through June 2nd. Birdies and Eagles will be brought to you by horses. The Kemper Cavalry, known for quality insurance, brings you the Kemper Open. See it live May 30th through June 2nd. If it happens in baseball, you'll see it on ESPN. There he goes. He leaves. He makes the catch. See Tuesday night doubleheaders, Wednesday night excitement, Friday night twin bills, and exclusive Sunday night action. Welcome to Wally World, as California's Wally Joyner continues to tear up the American League. He'll face young slugger Frank Thomas and the White Sox live at 8 Eastern on ESPN's Wednesday Night Baseball. Back in Roland Garros, and we will take you back, of course, to the match you were watching a moment ago on Court Central. Ronald Agenor held for 4-3, but he trails two sets to love to Jimmy Connors. Let's take you downstairs now in the bowels of Court Central, where Todd Woodbridge is with our own Fred Stolle. Fred? Yeah, thanks, Barry. And uh, Todd, uh, thanks for staying and having a chat with us. Uh, a little bit of a disappointing finish to that one, eh? Yeah, I was there for the taking early in the uh, third, well, in the third, and then I had another break in the fourth and another break in the fifth, so I had my chances. Um, I just felt that, you know, in the end, that he served a bit strong for me, and I, and, uh, and I think that was the difference. Uh, off the ground and everything like that, I was equal, but in the, in the end, I think it came down to first serve power. First couple of sets, let's go through the match as, as it went. You had a break, and then Boris uh, came back. You had a, a call early in that first set that you were a bit upset with, and then Boris uh, won four games on the trot serve for the first set, and you came back and won four games. Then he had a bit of an injury. You won the second set 6-1. When he put the sleeve on his leg, what, were, what went through your mind then? What goes through your mind... Well, uh, it's difficult because I knew that something was wrong. Um, you know, you got the trainer, and then at that stage I was only hitting two or three balls back over, and he'd make an error. So um, it was difficult for me to make a decision what I was going to do. And I thought that I'd like, you know, I wanted to, you know, give it a go and go for it because it was there for me to try and take. Um, but at that stage, when he got down at three-one, he started to hit out a bit more, and um, and then I sort of. You know, I'd, I'd just been playing defensively or just getting the ball back into play. And then he started coming at me, which sort of, uh, I had to readjust and didn't do it right. Uh, in the, uh, you let him back in the third set. What did you think of two sets to one? Did you think that you still, and you got that early break in the in the fourth, you still felt that you could put him away at that stage? I, I you know, I was four two up, I think, and I, I felt like I had 30 love. Yeah, I love 30 at four two, I think. And I felt then that, you know, I, I was going to win. I, I was so close. Um, and I think it came down to a lot of those points I went for them and I didn't make him or, or uh, I, you know, I didn't want to sort of let him 
beat me. I, I wanted to have a go. There was a, there's a very fine line between a, a champion and, and yourself coming up through, and this is the best result you've had. You're at, at ranking number 39 now. But the, uh, at, towards the end of that fourth set, and then in the fifth set, when he was in trouble, he chipped and charged and came in and put you under pressure to hit big shots. Mm -hmm. uh, there were occasions where you missed a couple of volleys that I'm sure you'd like to have back, or you'd like to have the approach shots back on those volleys. I think, um, I think that was just the pressure of the situation, and um, as you said, he was chip charging me, so I was having to make good shots, and that was building up the pressure for me to have to make great shots, and um, perhaps that was where I didn't get into him. I, I wasn't making him have to hit passing shots and uh, things like that, but one volley uh, I can remember. Um, I would much rather have that again. I think it would have given me 40-30 for five two or five three in the third or something yeah that's that's so. the one the forehand that you hesitated on and you 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 miss hit the volley it wasn't as though you uh, didn't see it it yeah, was there I, you were just uh, a fraction i think i just wanted in. to get it over so badly and uh, that was the problem <laughs> what did you think uh, uh, getting to the fifth set the the shot that turned it around right at the very end you had break point and you ran around a serve you hammered a forehand if it had been about another foot closer to the line, it would have been a winner for the break. And somehow Boris got that one back with some something on it, and you couldn't get to the return for him. That was just the way I think it, he's got that extra strength than what I've got. You know, he's a bigger man and, and very strong. And out there, I only needed another, as you said, a foot, and I had it. But he was able to get something on it. And at that, that stage, I felt that um, it, I was going to go for it again and take it up to him and have a go on the point. And... Um, I mean, I did that too good. Uh, well, you qualified for the event last year. You played a great one this year. You're going to be back. Congratulations on a fabulous effort, and thanks for staying with us. Thanks, Fred. Back up to you, Barry. Thanks to Todd Woodridge. Not easy to come up with. Thanks, man. Okay. Talking glowing terms about your opponent when it's an opponent that you really had to feel you should have beat. The French Open is being brought to you today by Subaru. We built our reputation by building a better car. And BioDuels, non-alcoholic brew, brewed like a premium beer to taste like a premium beer. And when we come back, we will take you over to Court Central, where Ronald Agenor has a service break now on Jimmy Connors, and he'll be serving for the third set. We'll be back. Mr. Jones has gone 46 days without HBO comedy. Today's test, old stick response. I just flew in from the computer room, and boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> Assistant, please! Mr. Jones is addicted to large doses of the revolutionary new comics on HBO. Once accustomed to this bold and daring new comedy, old shtick tolerance drops significantly. The brightest new comics on HBO. Simply the best. The Wilsons tried almost everything to make their house more attractive to buyers, but it just didn't sell until they called our ERA office. I told them about the ERA home warranty plan that would help their house sell faster by giving the buyer peace of mind. It helped make their house the most appealing buy on the block. The ERA home warranty plans, just the kind of help you'd expect from a friend. It doesn't take long to sell a house if you call the right people. List your house with an ERA broker. ERA, first in service. Subaru dealer now and you can save over $2,700. Buy a Subaru Legacy L sedan automatic with air conditioning, power windows and door locks, cruise control and more. Get $2,000 in factory cash direct to you that you can use for your down payment. Plus the special value package savings of an additional $705. With great savings like this, you're really in the money. Hurry in for great savings during your Subaru dealer spring value day celebration. Ronald Agenor has gotten himself right back into this match on Court Central. Jimmy Connors won the first two sets, 6-4 and 6-2. Agenor has just taken the third set. I'm sure that is the last thing in the world that Jimmy Connors wanted to happen. Let's go back out now to Ron Franklin and Mary Carrillo. And I'm sure uh, James Scott Connors is thinking, I would have just as soon been in the locker room at this point. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And he has played so well, and also, as Mary pointed out uh, the last time you came out to us, that he has played carefully. He's played uh, very intelligently. But Agenor got the break. Uh, Jimmy couldn't climb back in with his own serve. Uh, that was uh, in game number eight, and it was the only break that Connors has had in, in almost two sets. Well, Connors really tried to stick it to Agenor in this third set. He wanted to be off the court. Uh, and, and he said that in his match against Todd Witzkin, because he's doing commentary here, 
as well as playing in the tournament this week, someone asked him after he beat Witzkin, well, if you would, were calling your own match, <laughs> what, would you have, what would you have said about yourself? And he said, I would have said that the boy is lucky to have won in straight, and of course now he's not going to win this thing in straight if he wins it at all. He didn't want to go to a fourth set. He tried to, uh, to finish a lot of points at the net, and he just wasn't able to. Agenor came up with some good passes. But he'll continue to do that because he was talking about this match yesterday, and he said, look, wh whatever happens, I'm going to be coming in. Anything short, I'm going to be jumping on. Serves, I'm going to be jumping on. And he'll continue that against Agenor. He's going to try to press him. Again, Agenor is, uh, is a talented clay court player. He's only won one of his three titles off of the surface of clay. I mean, this is what he really, you know, makes his, makes his money on. But, um, but he's also, uh, he's a wild man. I mean, he, he can really, uh, he's not a patient clay court player at all. He can hit to all fields, and Connors knows that. Engineer coming off a career high, $243,000, and finished in the top 50 for the fourth straight year. That was last year. And he beat Connors. That was, uh, as Mary was mentioning, in a different surface. They played at uh, Toulouse. Agenor. You know what's really interesting for the people that were not here earlier when we came out and we talked about how Jimmy had the crowd in his in his pocket. Every time Agenor has gone toward the umpire's chair, the crowd has really gotten on him bad. <laughs> and he's this is his home. Well, it's kids' day here, as we've said over and over, and this server is the biggest kid here, and that's why the fans love him so much. He's trying real hard to kid the calendar. Fifteen. See Connors, he's he is taking time between points. He's a lot fitter than he was a few months ago when we saw him play at the Lipton tournament, where he did win a round. He's been working out. And he's lost some weight. He came into this tournament pretty fit. He says he just wants to climb back into the top 100. That's the first thing he wants to do this year. He's hoping he's playing his best tennis by the time he reaches the U.S. Open. It's amazing. A lot of people, including a lot of his fellow players, were surprised to see him here in Paris to play in this tournament. We're glad that he did. done. Yeah, you mentioned the name Connors to the players here. And a big smile crosses over all their faces. Jim Courier yesterday oh, called this guy the Nolan Ryan of tennis. Of course, he, has, he, he hasn't quite done what uh, Ryan has done. We mentioned earlier, Connors has only played a handful of matches in the last two years. But once he had his wrist surgery last October, he really felt that, uh, you know, his doctor said to him, if you can you know, if it feels good in six months, it'll feel good for five years. Oh. 
And he says there's no problem. gets excited when uh, Connor's name Long comes up uh, on the roster to play and that's the people who promote these tournaments because of what he does and putting people in the stands. The Agenor is finally starting to play a more intelligent match. He's making Connors hit a lot of balls and that's what he should have done right from the start. Try to wear him down. You can see Connors was a little weary by the time he got to this one. He couldn't jump up as much as he needed for the smash. Now 30 all. It's a break point for Agenor. Mary's point really comes home, and particularly con considering what happened in the first and second set when Agenor could not hold serve. He was broken six times in the first two sets, and now he's, he's hitting shots that he was not hitting. He's keeping the ball in play, and Jimmy's having to go after a lot of shots he didn't have to go after mm -hmm. earlier. is wide and Connors has been broken to open the fourth set he is down love one leading two sets to one and let's go back to Barry Tompkins Barry all right thanks very much Ron Franklin and why don't we bring you up to date of what's going on here this third day of play in the 1991 French Open the 100th French Open hard to believe isn't it do you remember the first let's take a look at some of the scores from around and about these courts today first of all Guy Forget one of the local favorites here had to go to four sets this time before he beat Jimmy Arias. He beat him at a tiebreaker in the fourth and final set. And Guy Forget, a couple of singles titles already this year in Sydney and in Brussels. Might be a little bit better on a faster surface, though, but playing well here. Michael Chang, a remarkable record in five-set matches. He is 8-1 and one in five-set matches and 4-0 and oh in the French Open. He beats Lars Janssen today. Christian Miniusi of Argentina was a winner today over Marcelo Filippini. Filippini had to withdraw in the middle of the third set because of a thigh problem. So, tough break for Filippini of Uruguay. Good news, I suppose, for Miniusi, who will move on through to the next round. A qualifier, Olivier Delatre of France, is a winner over Peter Lundgren. We talked about Lundgren yesterday, saying when he's good, he's good. When he's bad, he's bad. He was bad today. Delatre moves on. Sergei Bruguera. More bad news. He had to withdraw because of a possible disc problem. So Omar Camparese of Italy, who has played well here in the past, moves on. Andre Agassi, no problems for him, though. Straight sets. A winner over Peter Korda, a rematch of the second round match at last year's U.S. Open. Veli Palohimo, I think Roy Rogers used to ride one of those, didn't he? Marcos Andruska beat him, and he beat him in five sets, bageling him in the fifth and final set. One of the McEnroe brothers doing a fine job. Patrick McEnroe is a winner over Jason Stoltenberg of Australia. Another one of the fine young juniors out of Australia. 7-6, 6-3, and 6-4. Patrick McEnroe moves on into the next round. Cristiano Corradi of Italy played Thomas Carbonell of Spain. The Spanish had not been doing very well today, but Carbonell keeps up the hopes. 6-1, 7-5, 3-6, and 6-1. Carbonell on through to the third round. We talked about Cedric Piolin. He beat was the man who beat Brad Gilbert, but not so today. Francisco Clavet of Spain is the winner over him in straight sets, a tiebreaker in the third set. Let's turn to the women. Steffi Graf, no problem and no time in beating Petra Langrova of Czechoslovakia, 6-love and 6-1. She's still looking for that first Grand Slam title since the 1990 Australian Open. Kathy Rinaldi, at one time a quarterfinalist here, losing to a former Stanford student by the name of Tammy Whitlinger, 6-4 and 6-love. 
Petra Thorin of uh, Finland and a mild surprise beating Larisa Savchenko in three sets, 7-5 in the third. Savchenko 2-2 two two on clay this year, not having a good season on clay. Sean Stafford of the United States beating Florencia Labat of Argentina, 6-3 and 7-5. That was a match that took place out on court number 12. We've spoken to Mary Jo Fernandez as one who kind of sneaks through the draw. She's doing it again, folks. 6-4, 6 love over Sabine Hock of Germany. She had gotten to the Grand to a final of the Grand Slams in Australia earlier this year. That was her first Grand Slam final, but she's always played well here. Natalie Toziat, possibly the best woman player in France, 6-2-6-1, over Natalie Garry, also of France. She was a wild card entry here. Sibyl Niu Chateau. I think I stayed there once. Debbie Graham beat her. Debbie Graham at Stanford, the 1990 NCAA singles champion, a winner in straight sets today over Nyo Chateau. Katrina Maleva, 6-2-6-3 over Akiko Kijimuta of Japan. Bettina Fulco of Argentina, straight sets to beat Cristina Tessi of Argentina. Two Argentinians battling one another, and it was Fulco, the more experienced of the two, the winner, 6-2, 6-2. Nicole Jägerman in a tough match with Nicole Provis wins the battle of the Nicole, 6-4, 5-7, and 6-3 for Jägerman. She moves on through. She's played five tournaments in 1991, all on clay. And she hasn't gotten past the second round in any, but she is past the second round this time. So good performance for her. And that is the way it has looked so far at Roland Garros. Let's take you right now down below us to court 11. Annie Grossman, who has been quite a success story here in the French Open in the past, got to the round of 16 on two successive occasions. And she is in the process now of having a fine match with Natalia Sverova. Here's Mary Carrillo and Ron Franklin. Well, that's Grossman. She is from Grove City, Ohio. Serving for the match, it's 30 all. This is great work uh, for Annie Grossman. She's had a tough year. She lost her father, Bill, yeah, just pause. about a month and a half ago. Natalia Zvereva, a finalist here a few years ago, got blown out by Steffi Grop 0-0. And she's seated 15 here. Interestingly enough, she, she 0-0'd somebody in her first round. But I don't think she's going to get by Annie Grossman. As Barry Tompkins said, she's always had success here. This is her third French Open. She's gotten to the fourth round two other times she's played here. Okay. 6-4, 1-6, 6-4 win over Zerba, the, the 15th seed in the tournament. Congratulations to her. Barry, let's go back to you. All right, thanks very much, Annie Grossman. I'll tell you, when they draw up the picture of the All-American girl, if it's not Mary Carrillo, then it is Annie Grossman. She's just terrific. She has a great personality, and that's a terrific win for her, especially as Mary Carrillo pointed out. It comes off some very trying times for her. So she is on through to the third round. She's been to the fourth round on two other occasions. Still Certainly, Connors looks tired. And he's, he, that's going to be uh, his single biggest problem right now. I thought so, too, when he came back uh, after the last changeover. I also think, I think some of Jimmy's allies have gone home. Kids Day, and I think some of them have headed toward the exits and the trains.
Yeah, that's too good, and Connors didn't bother chasing that down. Four love, Aginor. Aginor man, zero. Connors got to has got to decide, unless he already has, whether he should just toss this set and concentrate on winning the fifth. He, as you can see, he didn't bother chasing down that fine drop shot from Aginor. We could, we'll be able to tell by the way he plays his own service game, whether he's decided on that. S just sort of shoring up his reserves for, for the final set of this. Oh. Connors never won this French Open. He's won everything else. But he's never won the French. This is his uh, 12th try at it. He missed it a bunch of years. In fact, had he played it and won it in 1974, he would have had himself a Grand Slam. But he was playing World, te World, World Team Tennis that year. And participants in that weren't allowed to play. That looks like a tired forehand. And I'm not saying he would have won the French Open, Connors. Uh, that was the year Bjorn Borg won his first of six. But it's sort of a pity, and, and Connors feels that way now. He wishes he had given, given himself a couple more, couple more whacks at the French. Four times he's been a semifinalist here. And 15.30. You know, Mary, in fact, that's a pretty good trivia question. Uh, is Labor not the only one that, I know he won the Grand Slam, but is she not the only in modern era to have captured all four tournaments? And not necessarily the same year, but through the career. I think he is. He got it. Well, you know, there's there's some there's some big tournaments missing from uh, some players' resumes. Bjorn Borg was never able to win the U.S. Open. John Macro never won this event. He also never won the Australian. Which, again, it's a pity that uh, his record is blemished, too. As you can see, a nice stab volley winner from Agenor. And again, you know, I, I kind of wish that, uh, I'm sure they, they wish, too, that, uh, that maybe they'd gone after those tournaments a little bit more. I mean, sh surely none of them have anything to regret about their careers. <laughs> but even Martina Navratilova and Chris Everett have spoken about that, that, you know, when Steffi Groff won the Grand Slam a couple of years ago, they said, you know, we, we didn't really think of it that way. And it's a pity. Neither one of those two won all four in the same calendar year. Aginor got there, but he'll push it wide. 30-40. Yet John Newcomb is another one. But this is one tournament that, that John was never able to Well, some greats. You know, Ken Rosewell never won Wimbledon. Neither did Pancho Gonzalez. Aginor now goes up five love in the fourth set. So let's Aginor take a break. Connors leads Saint two Gerard. sets to one. Too much of a good thing is a good thing. The new, incredibly comfortable Mercury Grand Marquis. All this on the quality of a Mercury. So, Mr. Dubin, I'd like to marry your daughter, sir. The toughest part of getting engaged is facing Dad. Mr. Dubin, marriage is a noble institution. Can I call you Dad? Mr. Dubin, I will love, honor, cherish. Am I getting warm? Well, at least it's easy to know what to spend on a diamond engagement ring. Mr. Dubin, I think I'm hearing wedding bells. Ask your IJO master jeweler about the two-month salary guideline. I'd like to marry your daughter, marry your daughter, marry your daughter, if it's okay with you. 
Visa and American Express both provide things like emergency card replacement and medical referral in their gold cards. But Visa thinks the best reason to have a gold card is being able to use it when you travel back to Cabo San Lucas. And the hotel where you fell in love doesn't take American Express. And that's what really matters. Visa Gold, accepted worldwide at five million more places than American Express. Visa Gold, it's everywhere you want to be. Two-thirds of the world is water, but it's not all like this. The American paradise, the United States Virgin Islands. Well, we're back. Ron Franklin and Mary Carrillo. We are live from Paris. This is day three of the French Open 1991. Jimmy Connors looks at an ace. And triple set point for that man right there, Ronald Agenor. It's hard to know what Connors has left in his tank. I remember a couple of years ago when he was playing Andre Agassi at the U.S. Open. He only very nearly beat him in the fifth set after he was having dizzy spells in the fourth, and everyone everyone thought maybe. The, he was going to fall down and not get up. But it's really on Agenor's racket now. So the situation, we're going to go to a fifth set. Connors won the first two, four and two. Agenor has taken the, the last two sets, six three, and now six love. Now I can promise you this, the noise you're hearing from the crowd is for James Scott Connors. Right sur le line, as they say around here, that hit off the line. You hear the crowd, finally, uh, Connors wins a cheap point, and you can hear them trying to get him going. I've been watching some of this match with Jimmy Connors' producer at NBC, Glenn Adamo. He was hoping this guy would come through so there'd be a little uh, participatory journalism going on, Connors and Chang on Saturday. Sure that's going to happen anymore. 15:30. Now Connors is thinking he's he's hit him he's hit a softball. There's some other great uh, third round matchups. Pat McEnroe playing Andre Agassi. It's kind of a fun one to watch. It's a, it's a uh, the ball was deemed dead, so they will replay that point. And, uh, Agenor did the same thing just a few moments ago. He got cat calls. Connors walks up, gives the ball to the chair umpire, and he gets raised. <laughs> He's a hero. Says, yeah. <laughs> you know, here, you handle the grenade. That's right on the He got it. Those are exactly the kind of shots that Agenor was hitting to all fences in the first couple of sets. And now he's finally decided to calm down and just play solid clay court tennis. Late wake-up call, but it's working. Fifth set. Connors down 
Jimmy wins the point, but he goes back to use the towel and also get an opportunity to kind of catch his breath. As Agenor, as you can see, it's, it's very simple what he's doing. Side, side tennis. Trying to keep wearing him down. Michael Chang, by the way, sure didn't have an easy time getting into this, into the next round. A five-setter, but he's now 4-0 and oh in five-setters at the French Open. Why 30 40. Chang, who plays oh, the winner of this know. match, is 8 and 1 in five setters. The only time he ever lost a five set match was the first time he ever played one. It was in 1987 to Naduka Odozor at the U.S. Open. At this point in Chang's career, He's one of the youngest players in the draw. He likes five setters a lot more than this server, who's the oldest guy in the draw. And again, see Connors gulping air, taking all kinds of time. He's got 25 seconds. He'll try to use 26 or 7 if he can. And Agenor too much on the run to pass effectively. Just wide, advantage counters. Avantage corners. The oldest man to ever win the French Open was Andres Jimeno. He was 34 years old and 10 months. Ken Rosewall was 33 years old when he won it in 68. He was, <laughs> until Borg won it in 74, he was also the youngest ever to win it. When he did that in 53, he was an 18-year-old. Pretty show-off of him. <laughs> 15 years later, comes back and wins it again. When John McEnroe lost the other day, he was asked by the press how he thought Connors would do at the French. And John just smiled and said, "Look, we've become good friends lately. I don't want to, I don't want to say anything that might hurt that. But still, I really, I, I really thought going that this was a winnable match for Jimmy. And he might still figure out a way to win it."
Oh, my. You have to wonder if that fuel tank is running a little bit low because Jimmy now has been broken five straight Jimmy times. As you know, at least one lob fifth. When you're five foot eight and 140 pounds, you don't play a power game. You use your head, your ground strokes, and my secret weapon, speed. That's why I picked the pump from Reebok. When I'm pumped up, I get support, protection, and a custom fit. So if you want to beat those rock and roll tennis guys, pump up and air out. Switch to the greatest sports performance shoe in the world, the Reebok Pump. Pump up and air out. Each year, the experts at Car and Driver look at over a hundred cars, so you don't have to. From the current new cars, they just picked their 10 best. At the most, you'll probably only buy one of them. That's too bad, because two of the 10 best are Mercury's. Mercury Sable and Mercury Tracer LTS. All this in the quality of a Mercury. Hello. Please excuse my laryngitis. We've been talking so much about our new Bartles and James light wine coolers, I'm beginning to lose my voice. The big news is our lights are a success. Ed believes this is because they are less sweet with even more fresh fruit flavor. Ed also believes if this keeps up, he'll have to do the talking about our new less sweet lights. Ed's going to be and he is more than ready. Ed. <laughs> If it happens in baseball, you'll see it on ESPN. Here he goes. He leaves. He makes the catch. See Tuesday night doubleheaders, Wednesday night excitement, Friday night twin bills, and exclusive Sunday night action. Welcome to Wally World. As California's Wally Joyner continues to tear up the American League, he'll face young slugger Frank Thomas and the White Sox live at 8 Eastern on ESPN's Wednesday night baseball. Back in Court Central, we're live from Paris. Third day of action here at the French Open, the 100th anniversary. Agenor in the far court. Goes on top 30 love in the second game. In case you just joined us, we'll review it for you. Connors won the first set 6-4. It came on to win the second 6-2. Then was halted 6-3 in the third. And Agenor has just won 6-love uh, in the fourth. And is up a break here in the fifth. Mary, the one thing you mentioned a moment ago that you thought this was winnable for Jimmy, but the, the thing that you told me earlier this morning was it needs to be short. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna win it. yeah, he really kind of had to take down Agenor in three. And Agenor has really cleaned up his act, which oh. is just what he had to do. He looks like a different person. Uh, the, some sort of metamorphosis has come over him, but the, the first couple of sets, it was like the biorhythms. Well, he's we're, a we're mad gonna... slasher, though, Ron. I mean, that's really that's really how he how he plays. But he, yeah, he was uh, he was bright enough to calm down. Jimmy pushes that one long, and it is too loud here in the fifth set. Agenor. Agenor, man. Does Known by many as the Haitian sensation. <laughs> Reason uh, for that, he was. I guess he was born or, or moved to Haiti very early on in his life. Right, he was born there. He's been living in Bordeaux, though, uh, about an hour plane ride from here. He's been living there for years. He speaks French fluently, and the French and adopt him when he's winning anyway. When he's losing, they consider him a Haitian. But uh, he's an interesting guy. He's got sort of a crazy game. He speaks five different languages, including Creole and... Swahili also. And, yeah, not a lot of guys in the locker room who, you know, what? share the Swahili language with you. But just think of the secrets you could keep. Thirty love.
gets the last word on that two lick cords and he uh, he threw up his fist when he won that one then this shot hit the net and so did the reply he gets to just flick it into the open court went over like a whisper. So we're tied two sets apiece. Aginor up a break in the fifth. Aginor man does just a uh, um. Danny Amos. Thursdays on A and E, from allies to enemies, anarchy to democracy, scandals that violate our rights, people battling for justice. Hello, I'm Bill Curtis for World of Action. The shocking stories of today, destined for the history books of tomorrow. World in Action, Thursdays, 8:30 Eastern, 9:30 Pacific on A and E. Paris, where romance is set free to soar, to dance, tethered to the city only by heartstrings. Follow it and you will find its source, the very essence of romance captured in a bottle, Moet, France's best loved champagne. of a good thing is a good thing. The new incredibly comfortable Mercury Grand Marquis. All this on the quality of a Mercury. It is Kids Day here at Roland Garros and the oldest kid on the grounds, James Scott Connors, in a little bit of trouble now in the fifth set against Ronald Agenor. Agenor has a break and is serving at 2-1 in the fifth. Before we get you back out to that match, though, let's bring you up to date on a couple of scores. This match still going on, and Aaron Krikstein, of course, has made a career out of playing in five-set matches. Magnus Gustafsson and Krikstein splitting the first two sets, and it is on serve in the third set with Gustafsson 2-1 over Krikstein. And just completed a moment ago, Alberto Mancini has defeated Goran Perpich. He did it in five sets, a real seesaw match and a long match. It went on for something over four hours. Here is Alberto Mancini, a guy who everybody thought of as really the coming player on this clay court surface, but he kind of took a dip just about a year ago and really didn't do very much. Hasn't had too many injury problems, although he has been bothered by, I believe it's a knee. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Nonetheless, he had enough to beat Goran Perpich here. And this is match point. Mancini will stand back there and... Hack away at it, and a short ball there came to the net, put it away, and he wins the match in five sets. It wasn't easy, but Mancini is on through and will play the winner of the match we just spoke of a moment ago between Gustafsson 
and Aaron Quickstein and Fred Stolle has joined me and we're going to talk a little bit about Andre Agassi when we come back. Goran Perpic sounds like something you do after a couple of beers, doesn't it? <laughs> we're coming back. Don't go away. Third day of action here at Roland Garros. We'll talk about Andre after this. of a good thing is a good thing. The new incredibly comfortable Mercury Grand Marquis. All this on the quality of a Mercury. Heart. Desire. No crybabies allowed. And you gotta be willing to take a face full of dirt. It's all out baseball. It's gone. The nation's top teams dig in for the NCAA College World Series starting Friday live on ESPN. Tastes like a beer, cause it should, cause it's brewed like a beer, of course it's good. Working out or working late, when you're thirsting for a break, let's be perfectly clear, it's what beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. Odoo's. Odoo's, the brew from Anheuser-Busch, with the alcohol naturally removed for real beer taste and only 70 calories. And it's time and it will, it's what beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. Odoo's. Third day of competition in the 1991 French Open Tennis Championships winding down at Stade Roland Garros will remind you that we will be taking you back out to Court Central and the match that you have been watching between Jimmy Connors and Ronald Agenor. Agenor now with a break in hand in the fifth and deciding set. He leads it three games to one. So Jimmy Connors now really with his back against the wall. Fred Stolle has joined me up here and you start looking at who might be a real contender in this tournament. Of course, Andre Agassi was right at the get-go, but now when you look at his portion of the draw, he doesn't have another seeded player in his quarter. No, the seeds have dropped like flies in that section, Barry, haven't they? And uh, Andre now looks as though, uh, what he said earlier in the season, he got ready for the French Open. It looks as though he's got a crack at it now. But uh, there are still a few in his way. Patrick McEnroe uh, has only won a couple of matches on clay. Is next. But also in that section is Alberto Mancini. And Mancini, as you mentioned uh, a couple of years ago, was the up-and-comer on clay. And then, uh, like as we say in Australia, went walkabout. But uh, Agassi didn't have any problems today against Corder. Uh, Corder had a bad call, or what he considered a bad call, early in that first set. And from then on, it wasn't really a contest. And uh, Agassi and Corder play a similar type of game. Hit the ball pretty flat. And uh, Corder's the type of fellow that uh, doesn't have a big margin, a lot of margin of error. And I think it just played right into Agassi's hands today. Let me be devil's advocate for just a minute. Agassi's had two easy matches. You were telling me this morning, when you won this championship, you had, what was it, four, four five-set matches? Know. Would you rather be tested a little bit early? I think you'd rather get out there and play a couple of tough ones just to see. But I think he was tested yesterday, uh, Agassi, or his first round against uh, Mark Rosse, because Rosse, had he led two sets to love, Agassi in his press conference said, well, had I been down two sets to love, who knows whether I could have come back. We've seen a lot of comebacks, though, after players have lost the first two sets. Oh. You and Cliff sure saw one today. What about Patrick McEnroe? You mentioned he's only won a couple of matches on clay, but it's significant that the couple that he's won have been the two that he's played right here. Yeah, and what a tournament to do it here at the uh, the French Open, one of the Grand Slam titles. They've played one another once, uh, Agassi and McEnroe. That was in uh, an exhibition match, but uh, Patrick now believes he can play with the top players, and uh, I think he can. You know, after those big victories last year, they felt well and down in Australia, then uh, he's there. You know, the other thing that strikes me, too, about Andre Agassi is the simple fact the spotlight's not really on him quite as much this year as it has been. No, that's true. And uh, the Agassi entourage feel that if he was going to lose here, it might have been that first round because he came in here without a lot of confidence. But uh, now, 
They've had a look at the draw. They think he's uh, on track. Starting to look like a winner, isn't he? Andre Agassi and boy, has he got a wonderful draw. As Fred mentioned, not a seated player in his quarter. We'll be back. Whatever game you're into, stop by Goldman Brothers. We know baseball. We know basketball. We know lacrosse. Goldman Brothers has what you need to play your best. At Goldman Brothers, you'll find great selections of all the best brands of sporting equipment, apparel, and athletic footwear in stock and in your size. Stop by Goldman Brothers on Broadway in Hicksville just for the fun of it. Still family owned and operated. 36-month lease based on 36 equal monthly payments. A first monthly payment required at the... What our lawyer is trying to say is that you can lease a Volvo 240 sedan or wagon for 36 months with no down payment and pay just $2.99 a month. Or, to make a long story short, see your Volvo dealer. This extraordinary lease offer ends May 31st, so visit your dealer soon. Welcome back. Let's get you out right now to Court Central, a match between Ronald Agenor and Jay Connors. 3-1 Agenor with a break in the fifth. There's Ron Franklin and Mary Carrillo. Well, Jimmy's battling. He's serving right now. He has just brought it back even at 30-all. He was down to love 30 and certainly could not afford to be down two breaks in this fifth. He trails 3-1. Won the first two. Agenor, 6-3 and 6-love in the last two. Just why? Oh boy, that was a key call that Connors needed. Anything. Guy's gonna trot, trot out now and then see if he was right. Now Agenor is saying to the chair, hey bud, come on down and take a look at this. Connors has to hope that this. <laughs> the Connors is going to play this up. He's going to doll up the whole situation, and he's going to hope that it really rattles Agenor. This is a big, big chance for Connors to get back in. You can see, <laughs> oh God, <laughs> nobody works in a room like that guy. It's what John McEnroe was talking about the other day. Nobody does it like Jimmy. Sultan Ganji of Great Britain is the man in the chair, and. And he decided he was not going to come down and take a look at it. Boy, Agenor, <laughs> they turned on him or what? Merci, mademoiselle, madame. Caron, Caron. In Agenor's last service game, it went to 30-30 and a very nice shot by Connors to win. And the crowd started stomping their feet and clapping their hands. And yeah, again, Agenor just kind of looked into the stands. Yeah, but Ron, right now, he's got to consolidate this, Connors. He's got to win this point. Otherwise... Uh, He'll climb right back into that hole. He wins this point. Maybe this match changes for him. That's long. Connors holds. He is down a break. It is 3-2 Agenor in the fifth. We'll be right back with more live from Paris. Performance, uh, endurance, elegance. pays a cash back bonus on every penny in a charge. Pennies from heaven. It pays to discover. Hey, Mr. Delphorn, your graphites are here. Yes. 
Who guarantees overnight air delivery on Saturday to more people coast to coast? Thank you. Who did you think? UPS on Saturday? <laughs> You're looking at the back of Ronald Aginor. He came out early, and part of his purpose was to go over and to talk to that that one line judge on the far side, the one who called the ball out just a moment ago. just hit the ball wide. Hands up. Didn't miss by much, but Connors didn't kick up a fuss. Once he got close enough to the net to see this forehand of his, this is the, the one that he, he felt it just wide. He took a good enough look at it to realize that he had, in fact, just missed. 15 all. Match now three hours and 12 minutes long. He frames it into the stands. They go wild. No call has been made, and Jim, Jimmy is going up to show that the mark is clearly behind the tee. because the chair has come out to take a peek. And it's out. <laughs> you make the call. Barry, that mark is so check low. Mark and you didn't want to check the mark over there. Tell me why. You can see better the mark from here than from there. Azure's beep is that Ganji didn't didn't get out of the chair to check out his uh, his call on that side. And now Jimmy has taken a chair out of the stands and is sitting down and resting in the backcourt. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I have to agree with the chair. The mark goes six inches or better behind the tee. I don't think the ball could have flattened out that much. Do you? Hey, those slashing marks are, are tough to call. Connors 
with two break points. Connors really didn't put this first smash away, did he? He got it, he aimed it into the center of the court. Azure got, got it back, but couldn't control it. Fifteen forty. He's going to try to do what Jimmy Cott would Boris Becker has been able to do what Pete Sampras guys a lot younger than he guys who in the last 24 hours have come back from two sets Mary in the uh, first. I shouldn't have said that by the way of course uh, Connors uh, lost the, the last couple of sets he won the first two so it's not the same situation but for Connors to my mind it's it would be much more of an upset for a guy like Jimmy Connors to get deep into it this tournament than a very very young guy the crowd again chanting Jimmy Jimmy tell you what else he did he had broken Agenor six times in the first two sets Agenor had held service 11 straight times until that game that's why Let me correct myself. Ten straight times, rather than eleven. So he had a pretty good string going. Yeah, that's that's an important point to make. That finally Connors was able to crash through this guy's serve. Seven forty-one here in Paris, and they're staying tight. They don't want to go home on this one. Tied at three in the fifth set. Just one. Hands on. Fifteen all. Been a tough day for Arancha Sanchez Vicario. Her brother got upset this afternoon and uh, she is due on this court here and I'm wondering if they're going to have enough light to get them on here well she's actually they've put her out on uh, okay. they put her out on court three because you're right it stays light here t for another couple of hours but uh, it's not fair to keep someone waiting she's, she's up for love over uh, Godrich of Australia in that uh, first set yeah I think she'll cruise through that Jimmy Connors, television commentator. You can call this real uh, investigative journalism. Talk, call it heavy research for him to be putting together uh, this kind of data on the players. He didn't invent this idea, surely. George Plimpton uh, did it before Connors, and before that, Paul Gallico, who used to fight boxers and catch catch against baseball pitchers. But I don't. I'm not convinced any of those guys could actually be winning rounds at a major sporting event the way this guy is. No, you're right. And, and you called it best early on. He's a maestro. He can work a crowd as well or better than anybody.
40-15. Tyrone Cairns really throwing himself around now to try to win this. He said, I never want to have to say to myself, what if? That's why he's uh, he's hung yeah. around. And I mean, look who he's, look who he's, he's eclipsed, who he's out distance. He Borg, until his uh, mile comeback this year. I mean, he's been out of the game since 81, for all intents and purposes. Connors is playing Rosewall. He was playing during labor. He's still around. And his ranking is in the 300s now. As I said earlier, the first order of business for him this year is to get himself back into the, into the top 100. Any wishes uh, other than that, he's he's not telling us. He's keeping that close to sleep. But he really thinks he can still make a dent. A couple of years ago, uh, I was talking to him, and he said, boy, give me back 10 years. And earlier this year, I, I, I threw that back at him, and he said, I don't think that way anymore. I had a hell of a career. I'm happy where I am now. I want to keep going, see what I can still do. We saw it with Foreman earlier this year in boxing, or have continued to see it. A.J. Foyt at the Indianapolis 500 last weekend. Mark Spitz. Mm -hmm. And is just wide. Connors, we're on serve, leads 4-3 in the fifth. We're gonna need this. And things are gonna happen that you just can't predict. But you're protected. You just call me first and I'll put things right. Your neighborhood Allstate agent. Always on hand to take care of the things life hands you. You're in good hands with Allstate. one of the teachers here at Cablevision's Extra Health. And it's almost that time again, the time of year everyone dreads Regents Week. Well, I have a few tips for you. First, review what was covered in class before starting to study. Second, recopy your notes into a separate notebook, again, to keep things fresh in your mind. And finally, starting June 13th, I'd like you to stay tuned to us for our special Regents Review Week. Help is only a phone call away. Just a reminder, the day four tomorrow, the number one women's seed and the defending champion, Monica Seldes, will be in action. So, too, will uh, some of finalists from last year, Jennifer Capriati. The success story of yesterday, Pete Sampras, will try to keep it going against Thierry Champion. And Mats Wielander, another former champion who played well yesterday in winning his first round match, will also be in action. That's all starting at 9 o'clock Eastern. Back out to Court Central and Ron and Mary. Aginor serving, love 15. Ron serve in the fifth. Another American, Aaron Crickstein, just dropped the third set in his match out there. 
Our, our good friend, Dr. Leo Levin, the statistician, <laughs> calls him the Ernie Banks of tennis. Hey, you want to play five? He had a five-setter yesterday, and he's playing with an injury. He hurt himself in Dusseldorf, so he's a little sore. We'll see if he gets past that. If he does, he plays, ooh, Alberto Mancini next round. Oh, well played by Ashner because that return of Connors had skipped off the line. The tick is in his favor as the ball falls over, and it is 4-4 in the fifth set. There's the match that Mary's talking about. Christine losing the third set and trails 1-0 in the fourth. Gustafsson's been playing such good ball. I'd kind of give him the edge in that one. Connor's warming up his commentary for this weekend. He was trying to say that that sure was weak. That's out. By the way, Chris Everett was also to be joining Jimmy this weekend. But she's resting up herself and uh, and her little baby. She's, she hopes to be well. In fact, she's, she's supposed to be fine for Wimbledon, where she'll... Uh, reassume her television commentary. I'm sure she's watching this and rooting for the server. 15 love. Nord looks on at somewhat of bewilderment as Connors again just getting a big kick out of the roar from the crowd. And Connor smiles, his smile. Boy, he looks just like his son Brett. Of course, he's got a, a little girl, Aubrey Lee, too. The face sheds about 30 years. From Kaz. John McEnroe was once asked what it would take for him to to enjoy the same crowd response as Jimmy Connors. And he said, <laughs> this was a couple of years ago, he said, I'd have to get married, have kids, and start losing. And in fact, he is a wild favorite, especially in Europe. They love him here, and when he won that first set in his first round match, the place went nuts. Of course, then he, he lost in four. Oh, missed an easy one, sitting right on top of the net. Took a big old swing at that. Ronda. So Connors was up 30 love, and, and now it's 30 off. That's a kind of a big point too, because he really he didn't have to overplay this at all. He really just had to poke it into the open court, and as you can see, the ball just got bigger and bigger in his in his eyes, and he's taken some time before he serves at 30 all, thinking about this one hoping the memory goes away. <clears throat> Who knows how expensive that missed forehand will be. 30 all, 4-4, four, four, fifth set.
Ben's still applauding this one from Connors. He didn't put these volleys away, did he? Actually, he had to take a couple of volleys before he finally ended this one. But he did. Sitting here in the stadium, if you didn't, or better could have looked away and thought that maybe the Giants had just scored against Buffalo in the Super Bowl again. It's amazing. And this gives Connors a chance to go up 5-4 in the final set. He's missed so many first serves when he's really he's really needed them. his age at all, does he? <laughs> he really does. <laughs> but it was up 30. Love Ashenor came back and uh, squared it at 30 all. And he had the advantage. Back to Deuce and now the advantage again. Just the chin. Jimmy. <laughs> advantage counters. Leads 5-4 in the fifth. Performance, uh, endurance, elegance. What more can anyone ask of a luxury car? If you wanted a beautiful, healthy lawn, you had to collect your grass clippings in a container like this. But Toro Recyclo Mowers cut without bagging, turning clippings into fine pieces that become a natural fertilizer, not thatch. So, for a beautiful, healthy lawn today, you don't have to put your clippings into this container. You can simply put them into this one. Check the yellow pages for the Toro dealer nearest you. remember a guy said that to me once and I never asked him what he meant. Why not? Well, you know, I didn't want to sound stupid. Saving it up, huh? <laughs> Relax. You're among friends. Levi's 100% cotton dockers.
when you have a lot of horses under your hood, shouldn't you have Michelin high-performance tires under your car? Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Port Central, live from Paris. Agenor leading at 15 love, and I'll make it 30 love in this 10th game of the fifth set. There you see the scores. Connors jumping out 6 4 6 2. Then he could only manage three games in the next 15. But came back with the big break in game number six to draw this even. And we are on serve. Don't tell him he's the oldest guy in the tournament. Right now, he's... ...is uh, is serving. It's 15-all in this opening game. 